Cameras, cameras, cameras. It seems a new one is released every day and touting to be the next best thing since sliced bread. But let's rewind way back and talk about the heart of the camera, the sensor. Okay, let's get nerdy with the talk of sensors. There's a ton of science involved, but we're going to break it down for you so it's easy to digest how that image you're pointing at gets turned into recorded motion picture. But before we explore the tech, let's go back in time to the days of chemical film. In the past, photo and motion picture cameras all used chemical film as their sensors. The film can be changed out after each roll to a different film stock type with a different look and qualities. The great thing back in the film days is that you weren't tied to a single sensor and can swap out the look at will. The bad is that you had to wait until you're done using a roll or magazine of film before changing it. And film got kind of expensive. Fast forward to the digital era. The whole talk of film stock isn't quite as different from digital as you think. It's very important to look at camera sensors as film stock, except unlike with film, digital cameras have their film stock built in and aren't swappable. Film is a thin sheet of plastic covered with fine layers of photosensitive silver halide crystals that react to light. Not too different from it, a digital sensor is a sheet of silicone with photosensitive photosites that converts light to electrons and then into data. The main difference being that in chemical film, once a crystal reacts, it's permanently used. While in a digital sensor, after the photosite gives its signal, it's ready for more and more and more and more and more. In the digital world, each of the sensor photosites typically translates into a single pixel in your digital image. Group many of them close together across the surface area of the sensor, and then all those captured pixels make up a full image. The more photosites you have, the more detail you can capture. Not all film or digital sensors are created equally in the sizes of their silver halide crystals and photosites respectively. What difference do their sizes make? The larger a film crystal or photosite, the more light that they can clearly detect and react to. The downside is that the larger they are, the fewer fine details each can capture. What does all of this mean practically? Let's assume that we're talking about identically sized film and sensors. Say a 35mm photography camera shooting on film, and a Sony full frame mirrorless camera like the A7 series. A film stock with finer grain like some Kodak Portra 160 will give you lots of detail, but it takes a lot of light for these small grains to react. So this film stock is more fit for the outdoors where there's plenty of light. On the Sony A7R Mark II, we're packing 42 million photosites, AKA 42 megapixels into one sensor. We can capture a ton of detail with it, but once we get into a really dark room and make the camera amp up the electrical charge to its sensor to see more, a lot of electrical errors can happen with those snugly grouped photosites, and we get noise. It usually shows up as a bunch of grain and weird colors dancing around. On the other end of the spectrum, when working with film with large crystals like Fujifilm Pro 400H, you won't get as many fine details creating a sharper image, but with the more sensitive crystals, you can easily shoot indoors. Moving to digital, the A7S Mark II has just a fraction of the photo size of the A7R Mark II, counting 12 million versus 42 million. So each photo size can be much bigger. What results is a sensor that can naturally see more in the dark without having to push its electrical limits very far. The A7S is an absolute champion of low light because of this. Okay, let's let that nerdiness sink in and summarize our sensor fundamentals. Digital camera sensors share plenty in common with their film predecessors, except the sensor is built in while film is used once and swapped out. Chemical film uses light-sensitive silver halide crystals, while digital sensors use light-sensitive photosites to capture images. Smaller crystals and photosites allow you to capture more detail at expense of light sensitivity. Larger crystals and photosites give you more light sensitivity, but will capture less detail. We'll take a break from nerding out for now. In the next lesson, we'll discuss all about the main different digital sensor technologies that you'll see in cameras out there, as well as their pros and cons. Got questions? Post them in the comment section below.